Reticulohistiocytoma is much less common than xanthogranuloma, but I like to include it right here because it looks a lot like xanthogranuloma. So there are two forms, the solitary form, which sometimes people call solitary epithelioid histiocytoma, um, and it's kind of similar, a uh, brownish, reddish, yellow papule, and it's solitary and it's a benign thing, okay? Then there is the, in my experience, much less common uh, multicentric form of reticulohistiocytosis that we call it. And these patients often have multiple lesions, tend to be on the finger, sometimes the mucosa, and they have some significant serious systemic problems like destructive arthritis, autoimmune diseases, sometimes internal malignancy, lipid abnormalities, et cetera. So those patients with multiple lesions, they actually need to get some additional workup and, and could potentially have problems. The solitary ones are not problematic. Now, this is what they look like. They tend to have some similarity, I think, with xanthogranuloma. The difference is the cells are much larger and really epithelioid. They have a ton of dense, dense pink cytoplasm. And the nuclei can look kind of weird and wild. And I, I would not blame you for looking at this and thinking, gosh, could that be like a carcinoma or epithelioid sarcoma, something bad? So, you know, if you want to do a keratin or an S, you know, a SOX10 to make sure it's not melanocytic or epithelial, I would not fault someone for that. They also tend to have some background inflammatory cells, including EOs. Sometimes they can have foamy cells and tutons. So they do, even though I think they're probably two separate things, like etiologically, I think that microscopically, they really have a spectrum of morphologic features that overlap. The thing I really like to see is the big epithelioid cells that have dense, dense cytoplasm to them, okay? When I see those, that's what makes me call something a reticulohistiocytoma. If I really see few or none of those, and I see teuton and e a lot of teutons and eos, then I tend to call it xanthogranuloma, okay? And oftentimes, the cytoplasm of these big, dense, pink histiocytes has a kind of two toned, not to be complete, fused with two tons, but a double tone, let's say that way, color. They have a kind of a more purpley or lavender area in the middle and then a more pale pink towards the outside. See it there? Here's some here. I tried to capture it. It's a little hard to, to get a good picture of, but I think it's a kind of distinct thing. Once you recognize it, it's a very distinct look that these histiocytes have, okay? Oh, here, that, that's a better picture of it. You can see the, the darker purple in the middle. And I suspect this is just a, a matter of how the cytoplasm is arranged. I'm not really sure, though.